All right, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be in 1 Peter chapter 2 today, so I hope you guys are looking forward to it. I know I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Hope everybody is out there having a wonderful, wonderful day. And um, let's pray, and then we can get into this, guys. Father God, I want to come before you today, Lord. I want to lift your name and all the praise and all the glory up to heaven, Lord, where it belongs, God. You are so great. You are so... I don't know, Lord. I don't have the words for it, but I know you know the words that I'm thinking, Lord, and that's what you are to me. You are so much more than everything, Lord. You have enabled me to have a life I didn't even know that I could have. You have enabled me to be a person that I didn't even know that I could be. And I have so much joy and happiness inside of me, Lord. Thank you. I'm so thankful, Lord. Thank you for my family, my grandbaby, my mother, my daughter, just everybody, Lord. Thank you. And thank you for this chance, Lord, to, to not only feed myself with your word, but to help others maybe get fed too, Lord. I ask that this video, Lord, be able to impact, touch somebody, Lord, and pull them into you. And I pray all of this in your holy and mighty name. Amen. Y'all, Father God is so good. Somebody out there say amen and let's get into this. All right, guys. So 1 Peter 2. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Coming to him as, a li as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God, and precious you also as living stones are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beloved, I beg you, as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, Glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king is supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. Y'all, I'm going to read those two verses again because, man, they're cutting at me, and I know they have to cut at other people, and it's, it's what we need to hear now more than ever. Therefore, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether to the king as supreme or to governors, as to those who are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, as free 
yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as bond servants of God. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable. If because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully, for what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth? Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Amen, guys. Amen. God is so beautiful, guys. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. He's so amazing, guys. All right. Let's jump back into this stuff. God is so amazing, guys. Don't... Don't ever lose your wonder over him or your salvation. I hope I never do. Okay, guys. So yesterday we jumped into 1 Peter. And so looking back at chapter 1, verse 23. Let me read that to you. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So I want to focus on that first part. Having been born again, right? So we see the subject of rebirth or being born again. We, like Nicodemus, must understand the necessity of this rebirth. And in chapter 2, we move on from that new spiritual birth and into the new life that must follow for the success of any born-again believer in Jesus Christ. And so, with that in mind, Peter and his writing not only serve as just wonderful and potent daily bread, but it also provides us with a more deeply enriched outlook, and it enables us to walk a more honest and productive walk of faith. 2-1, guys. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Man, there's a lot in that single verse, huh? So right off the bat here, we jump into some real meat, scripturally speaking. Peter lists five sins that can very easily beset us, befall us, get us as individuals. And I'm going to offer a more general outline for each for clarity's sake, and because sometimes in our own minds, if something isn't specifically said, we sort of have a way of getting ourselves around it. I know I have in the past. And so I want to give a very broad but yet accurate um, outline for each of these. Okay, so the first one that he talks about is he says we have to put away all malice, okay? So what does that mean? What does all malice mean? Well, that's every single type of wickedness. Take that in, guys. That's every single type of wickedness. We've got to put that away from us, right? So really, we could end the list there, but let's go on. Deceit. We've got to put that away from us. Okay, so what is deceit? Because sometimes we can have, well, it was just a little or was it a big one, you know? Well, here's what deceit is. Deceit, and I think we all know this to be true, is anything less than 100% straightforward. That's deceit. Okay, guys, the third one hypocrisy. And this centers around all forms of pretense, right? Okay, so hypocrisy. The fourth one is envy. Envy, or in other words, desiring anything that someone else has. That's envy. Put it away. Fifth one, 
all slander. Okay, so what is this? Well, slander is belittling or discrediting another by way of wicked words and backbiting. Got to put that away, all of it. All malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander. So, take note that none of these, none of these five, are physical sins. These are sins that can absolutely destroy the mind, heart, and spirit. These make it very clear. All of this makes it very clear why we must be born again, guys. Because that's what's in us. Alright, guys. Two-two. Two-two. As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Okay, so as Christians, our job does not end, but rather begins with our being born again. Just like a newborn hungers for the pure milk of its mother, so too do we, as believers, when healthy, we desire, we yearn for that perfect nourishment to satisfy us and cause growth. Our souls even thirst for that very thing, that word of God to fill us. I think it's also worth noting with regards to the phrase pure milk, if we look at 1 Corinthians 3, let's see, First Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 3, I believe. Okay. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? All right, guys. So, with that in mind, we can understand that this is a we can understand this a bit more clearly. Basically, teaching founded solely on God's word will be pure because God's word is pure. And so, being pure, God's word is also inherently nourishing. And so, if you're being fed the word of God, any of the word of God, It'll be a nourishment to your body. It's just a matter, or a nourishment to your soul. It's just a matter of how much of a nourishment. So, keep that in mind. You know, we all want to, we, we have to grow, you know, and we have to take it in as we can and absorb it. And I promise you, you can understand a scripture like this right now, and years from now, it may be able to mean a whole lot of other things to you. And that's what's so beautiful and powerful and amazing about God's word, guys. All right, so let's see, where are we at here? 2-4. Coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. From the time of the Iron Age and on, man built temples of stone to house God's presence. Christ tells us how blessed we are to have the Holy Spirit like we do. And here we can see that. As believers, the Holy Spirit now indwells us. It dwells inside of us. And so... We are as stones. We are a spiritual house for the divine. Christ was right. How blessed are we? We as Christians are so blessed that we get to be placed atop our perfect loving Savior in this church. Our cornerstone is what he is. And we put our faith, our lives, and our all upon him. And wisely so. It's the best decision anybody can make. Alright guys, 2-5. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Alright guys, so throughout the Old Testament, priests offered physical sacrifices on people's behalf liquids, grains, animals. Now, it's the New Testament. This is a new covenant. 
a new promise. And now we are called to offer up spiritual sacrifices. And what's more, we are to offer them up to God directly, no less. All right, guys. So scripture provides us with some points on this, okay? So Romans 12, 1, we are to offer our bodies to do his work, okay? Philippians 4, 18, we are to offer our money to help the spread of the gospel, okay, guys? Hebrews 13, 15, we are to offer up our praises in order to glorify him, to give the glory to where it belongs. As Christians, all we have, all we are, or all that we can do should always be at Father God's desire, whim, and dispensal. Alright guys, 2, 9, and 10. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Beautiful words, man. Peter has some beautiful words in it, guys. Such powerful, beautiful words here. That's what I wrote, man. <laughs> Peter, obviously, with the Old Testament in mind, points out for his audience that Father God's people is no longer exclusively the Jews. No, now Christ, his work, his words, and his disciples and apostles have called a lost world to break free of the darkness. They have called us to speak words of unrivaled power, proclaiming the need, the availability of divine mercy and grace for all y'all. Somebody out there better shout amen. 2, 11, and 12. Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Oh, y'all. Okay, so as we've discussed, we are a new creation. The old man is dead. We are now pilgrims, guys. We are sojourners in a culture that is flush with ungodliness, flush with godlessness. We are called to be transformed in spite of this. Daily, we are to crucify the flesh. We have to tack that carnal nature up on the wall, pick up our cross, and carry it daily in that walk of faith. We are to do this in a way that is impeccable, a way that portrays Christ and his splendor and his grace, his mercy, and all that he is to each and every person, person who encounters us or sees us. The evidence of Christ within us, so potent that even enemies may be stunned. 221 through 23, last one I'm going to share with you today. For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth? Who, when he was reviled, did not revile in return? When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. All right, guys, so Christ is our perfect example. He endured. He never reacted. He never retaliated. Vile words didn't cross his lips. He always did all that was right in all that he did. Amen, guys. If you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, and I promise God's got something he wants you to hear. Um, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you want to share it. My heart goes out to you. Um, any prayer requests, any comments, guys, drop those down here into the comment section. Go out there and do something for God today and tell somebody how much he loves them. 
and I know I say it all the time, but I do it myself every day, and I suggest it for you to walk up to the mirror, look at yourself in the eye, and know the worth that God sees in you guys. I love you. God loves you so much more than I do, man, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Go out there and have a blessed day.